We're going to be facing a economic crisis, the likes of which have never been seen in modern history. And again, look at what they here. did again during the COVID war. Yeah. The market should have crashed. Sure. The economy should have crashed. No, no. Screw you. Here we got it. We got a deal over here. We're going to give you zero interest rates. Borrow anything that you want. We're going to pump in trillions and trillions of dollars. Stay home. Don't worry about it. Here's money. The lower interest rates go, the lower the dollar falls. The lower the dollar falls, the higher gold and Bitcoin prices go up. After increasing rates by 5.25% since March 2022, the Federal Reserve Fed is presently in a wait and see phase, often called a pause. Since the Fed began hiking rates, inflation has notably decreased but remains moderately above the Fed's 2% target. Meanwhile, gold prices have risen by 14% year-to-date. However, most of these gains occurred since early October, as the metal had been trading sideways for most of 2023 until that point. The recent upsurge has been greatly accelerated by rising investor expectations that the Federal Reserve will not only conclude its interest rate hikes, but might also decrease interest rates as early as the first quarter of 2024. Famous analyst Gerald Salenti believes that the prices of gold and Bitcoin are positioned to increase. He attributes the lack of substantial increases in gold prices to the surge in interest rates and the subsequent dollar strengthening. According to him, the 2024 forecast suggests a decline in interest rates, a pattern observed before presidential elections. Gold prices historically tend to rise when the Federal Reserve is in an easing phase, whether it involves cutting interest rates or expanding its balance sheet due to concerns about potential inflation and the long-term effects of easing on the stability of the U.S. dollar and the economy. Shifting the focus to geopolitical matters, Gerald closely analyzes events in the Middle East that threaten to impact a fragile global economy. He highlights ongoing protests against the government, predating specific attacks, raising questions about the potential use of such events to manipulate public opinion or divert attention from internal issues. He anticipates a growing mentality of war and its potential impact on societal behavior, suggesting that heightened concerns related to conflict might lead more individuals to abandon urban areas. This could exacerbate economic challenges for cities with dwindling occupancy and reduced tax income. We will present clips from Gerald Salenti's with Kerry Lutz. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. Well, it's very simple. This isn't rocket science. The only reason gold prices didn't go up higher is because interest rates went up very high and the dollar got strong. Mm -hmm. As they lower interest rates, which we had forecast going back a year, that they're going to lower interest rates in 2024. They right. do it all the time in the run-up to the presidential reality show. <laughs> That's all it is. It's a reality show. Look at Nikki Haley, Mickey Mouse, Donald mm -hmm. Duck. I mean, look at the clowns running. Who is our Treasury Secretary? Janet Yellen. Yeah. What was the last job? Fed. Oh, head of the Federal Reserve? Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. The head of the Federal Reserve is our Treasury Secretary. I would hey. imagine. <laughs> yeah. So they're running the country because they're running the money. And yeah. they're going to keep it in power, so they're going to lower interest rates. The lower interest rates go, the lower the dollar falls. The lower the dollar falls, the higher gold and Bitcoin prices go up. To me, and I don't give, we don't give financial advice in the Trends Journal. Sure. Uh, but we tell you what in the world is going on and what's going to go on. Yeah, and we all we 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 give what is being reported mm -hmm. so you know we're not skewing it. And then we get yeah. our trends analysis and trend forecasts. So mm -hmm. to me, three things: gold, Bitcoin, and real estate. On the real going back to the real estate market. We said that when interest rates go up, there's not going to be a commercial, there's going to be a commercial real estate crash, but not a residential crash. Again, Agreed. because it's different than what happened with the panic of 08 when subprime mortgages. Prices may come down a little bit when when mortgage rates go down and there's more supply, but it's not going to be a crash. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be a time, we don't think the time is right now to buy real estate again. Right. And so real estate is a long play. And those are our three things. And then now we have to look at what's going on in the, in the consumer market. And you're looking at holiday sales. They're not going to be strong. 
Mm -hmm. And after the new year, we believe that the markets are going to go down again. As a matter of fact, we believe they're going to go down in December as well. Again, you, you it, we have these uh, other things going on called the Middle East, one of our top trends, 2023. So for everybody to look at, yep. we called it at I the remember. beginning of the year, Middle East meltdown. Mm -hmm. He said this was going to, people forget what was going on over there. And uh, this guy Netanyahu, by the way, his popularity rating is like in single digits. Yeah. And and uh, they, there were 39 weeks of protests going on before Hamas did this attack going on over there. 39 weeks of people, yeah. Israelis, taking to the streets mm -hmm. against, Obama, uh, against Obama, against Netanyahu's Judicial Reform right. Act. We said it. When all else fails, they take you to war. Mm -hmm. So they let it happen, and now they took the country to war. And uh, by the way, he, uh, Netanyahu's being brought up on those corruption charges, too, that they're back right. in court. <laughs> you know, it's a crime syndicate that that's running off. countries around the world. And, and again, as this war mentality keeps increasing, more and more people are going to want to get out of the cities. Yeah. And, and so the big cities are going to go bust. And by the way, they are As already. <laughs> they are already, and now they got a lot of let ta lot less tax revenue coming in because of all the vacancies and occupancy rates going way down. So, so you're going to see crime rates increase. Mm -hmm. It's it's going to be terrible. Gerald delves into China's economic state, drawing intricate connections between historical occurrences, governmental decisions, and the current landscape of the nation. China has encountered considerable challenges in rebounding from stringent COVID-19 restrictions imposed last year. Additionally, a profound liquidity crisis within the property sector has significantly hampered growth, eroding investor and consumer confidence. During a speech at a political assembly in Beijing, Xi Jinping acknowledged the gradual improvement in the country's economic recovery post-pandemic. However, he highlighted the challenges of international political tensions intertwined with domestic cyclic and structural issues. Xi emphasized the intricate and multifaceted nature of China's development, portraying the current economic recovery as being at a crucial juncture. In discussing China's population dynamics, Gerald suggests the possibility of discrepancies between the officially reported population figures and the actual count. This discrepancy, if proven, could contribute to the overextension of infrastructure and exacerbate ongoing economic challenges within the country. Gerald forewarns an impending economic crisis, envisioning its scale to be unparalleled. He likens this potential downturn to historical wartime economic adversities, stressing the likelihood of an unprecedented economic decline. Let's get back to the interview. And we get reports terrible. from people in China that are saying how terrible things are. So now let's go back. You look at China's GDP numbers from like 1970 to 2001. They were like this. Mm -hmm. Then that slime ball, murderous piece of crap, Bill Clinton, who got every time he got caught with his pants down, it's bombs away over Baghdad. Yeah. Let's let's do the Yugoslav war yeah. one after another. He brought China. Not only did he give us. Uh, what was that one where we took our jobs, uh, NAFTA, where yeah. they stole our jobs and brought them to cheap labor in China? He brought China into the World Trade Organization. Yeah. When China came into the World Trade Organization, 2001 to, to 2019, before the COVID war, their GDP skyrocketing. They overbuilt the place like when there's all booms you overbuild because like, everybody uh, really wants to make money. Right. So now it was overbuilt before and now the COVID war, locking it down. They are in a real estate bust, the likes of which have never been seen in modern history. It was way overbuilt to begin with. And then the COVID war made a bad situation worse. Again, in the Trends Journal, we only put in the data. Mm -hmm. Look at China's export numbers, Woof, going way down. Look at China's import numbers, Woof, going way down. Look at their manufacturing numbers going way down. Oh, not only in China, in Europe, in the United States. Yeah. PMI manufacturing numbers, the PPI manufacturing numbers 
PMI numbers are all down. So that means they're building, producing less, which means consumers are going to buy less. So what does China have? You look at China again, you look at their numbers. They got 1.4 billion people. Mm -hmm. They need more people. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I don't think it was done for that. I think it's done for power and control. We're going to go, we're going to be facing a economic crisis, the likes of which have never been seen in modern history. And again, look at what they here. did again during the COVID war. Yeah. The market should have crashed. For sure. The economy should have crashed. No, no. Screw you. Okay. Here we got it. We got a deal over here. We're going to give you zero interest rates. Borrow anything that you want. And we're going to pump in trillions and trillions of dollars. Stay home. Don't worry about it. Here's money. Yeah. I mean, you can't make this crap up. So they created this bubble. What is it, the American debt now? Almost $34 trillion? Gold prices will likely take a hit if the U.S. economy achieves a so-called soft landing in 2024 and avoids a recession, despite rising inflation and interest rates this year, according to the World Gold Council. What do you foresee for the future of gold and silver in the current economic landscape? Share your observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.